on the top of the course. The workers get busy sorting out the track for the second run of the men's slalom standing category, which is about to get underway. And Russia, first and third after the first run. So the men's slalom standing. Second run about to get underway here at Rosa Kuta. Let's have a look at the start list. The fastest 15 skiers go in reverse order. So Andre Chesney was the 15th quickest in the first run. It's uh, our leader after the, the opening run, Alexei Bugayev. There he is, number 15. And him and Vincent Gauthier Manuel just ski beautifully in the first run. After the fastest 15, the next 27 go uh, in the order they finish. So 16 down to 42, and uh, they will be uh, rounded off by uh, Santiago Vega of Chile. We will go 42nd with bib number 65. So what dramas does this second run in the men's slalom standing category hold in store for us? The Russian crowd are hopeful. Can they pick up a second gold medal to go with that of Valley Red Kozobov? He's just won the visually impaired category. Sashi. Andre Szczesny of Poland will get this second run of the men's slalom standing category underway. 15th quickest after run one. He needs to fly down this second run to set a time for the others to try and beat. The piece hard, harder probably than it's been for the whole competition. And the second pattern of gates has been set by Bjorn Bruin from Switzerland. 54 gates, 52 turning gates. And Szczesny, 125.38 at the time check in the middle of the piece now. The second terrain change as it snakes its way down to the skier's left, this finish area. And Szczesny doing a really good job. Oh, just getting a little late in the line. But brings it back together again. Sets up for the finish through that verticality. Two from home and a time for everyone to beat 150.35. Good work from Andrzej Szczesny. Masahiko Tokai of Japan. Slalom world champion from 2004 in Austria. His advantage over Szczesny is that 0.91 and uh, struggling on that uh, combination. Oh, gets thrown into the back seat and on the tails of his skis gets around to his right to make the red gate. And Tokai on the edge here now. How close is he to 125.38 with those mistakes? Has it cost him on the clock? The answer is yes, it has. It's cost it over a second and a half. Now 0.58 behind, having seen 0.91 in front. So in fact, he's lost 1.49. Now Tokai being bounced around all over the place. Skiing in the LW3 class, seven classes in this category. Oh, and that is not a good finish. And 151.17.82 off the pace. James Stanton, 
of the United States of America. Check out her Alpine racing after being inspired by what he saw in Vancouver. 19 years of age and the clouds starting to roll in now on the top part of the course. It's going to make life very difficult indeed for the later starters. Stanton, a little bit in the back seat, but now gets the weight forward over the center in front of him. Oh, gets caught on the inside ski. No way back for James Stanton. He's got to make it back up through that uh, red gate. And uh, he climbs back up, but uh, damage done. A oh, real disappointment. Just got his skis a little too close together and got caught on the inside edge of that left ski. Now the crowd in the finish area can see him. The noise level goes up a little bit, but Stanton sadly for him goes third. 12.22 off the pace. He'll be a bit frustrated, but he has a finish to his name in the Winter Paralympics. Romain Ribou of France, the next skier in the start hut. His advantage over Chesney at the start of this run is one second exactly. Oh, no! Well, he's had an equipment failure there. The right ski has just popped off. Oh, dearie me, Romain Ribou. Fan club will have to wait. The giant slalom, probably his favourite discipline. And he's a world champion from 2004, won silver from Salt Lake, so still has that to look forward to. But the ski just comes off. And he's had quite a heavy fall on his right side, but it seems to be okay. Now waiting patiently in the start hunt is uh, Thomas Gorka of Austrian LWT class. The fastest skiers that have a significant impairment in one leg. Some skiers, for example, have an impaired leg from birth. And uh, the ski on uh, just the one ski with the two outriggers. And off he goes. His advantage over Chesney, 2.85. Good opening turns from Rochard. Good work from the young Austrian. Rochard looking to take it away from Chesney. 125.38. Oh, yeah. 4.13 up from 2.85. Rochard skiing brilliantly in this. Uh, Second run, nice and tight to the gates, nice and direct in the full line. Surely he must take the lead away from Chesney if he negotiates his final couple of gates. Oh, it's a brilliant ski. Look at that. Well, it's uh, 3.81 seconds faster on the second run alone. Martin Wurtz now, another young Austrian, 20 years of age. He's uh, raced in the Super Combine as well as the two technical events in Sochi. Now, his advantage over his compatriot, as small as it can be, 100th of a second. Now, 121.25. How close is uh, the Grothaus time there? Well, he's lost at 1.46 now to trail by 1.45. Burks was absolutely motoring, wasn't he? Down this final pitch. And Burks doesn't seem to be as fluid or as quick as his uh, teammate. And Grokar's time, I think, will stand the test of Burks. Martin Burks stops it at 1.46.40, goes second. 2.71 behind Grokar. 
Thomas Phil now of Switzerland. His advantage over our leader, 0.19. Makes that turn on the inside ski. And Phil in the LW92 class. The skiers are having impairment affects arms and legs. Some skiers in this class have coordination problems, such as spasticity or some loss of control over one side of their body. And uh, Phil, the double medalist from the Turin Games. Looking to try and uh, get back on the Winter Paralympic podium. He was a silver medalist in slalom from Turin. Now, what can Phil do here? He's lost a lot of his uh, advantage at the first time check and doesn't seem to be as quick and shouting out 143.69 comes and goes Phil goes second 1.39 off the calculated time of Thomas Broca Mitchell Gourlay now of Australia in the LW682 class he is in this class having impairment in one arm and they will compete with one ski pole only Nika has uh, skiers with a combined arm and leg impairments in this class two. Now, Gourlay, fifth in the World Cup standings, second and third earlier in the season. By early in the season, I mean August, and he skied out. Oh, dear. Mitchell Gourlay, who's seventh in the downhill, didn't finish the Super G, he's not going to finish the slalom. Just got too hot going into the line and just couldn't control the speed or the turn and got caught in the heavy, sugary stuff on the side. And uh, no way back, and he realised that really he was uh, out of the running. Now, next in the start gate, the defending Winter Paralympic champion Adam Hall from New Zealand. Bronze medalist at the World Championships in La Molina last year. He's got an awful lot to do. He was at seventh quickest after the first run. He tops the World Cup standings in slalom this year with uh, three wins, two in, on home snow at the Coronet Peak in New Zealand back in August last year. And he won the slalom race in Copper Mountain in January, having come second the day before. Now, Hall in the LW1 class, which is allocated to athletes with an impairment that strongly affects uh, both legs, for example, an above the knee amputation of both legs or significant muscle weakness in both legs. And his advantage over Grochar is a 0.38. And he skied the top half well. Good work from Adam Hall. He's extended his advantage slightly. Now the final steep pitch. Oh, just getting caught on the inside edge and having to recorrect now. How much time has that taken? from his advantage 143.69 oh he's taken too much he's outside by just over half a second and the defending winter paralympic champion will not be retaining his title Braden Luscombe of Canada the next skier out of the heart his first uh, winter paralympic games and uh, didn't get off to a great start with four consecutive DNS Two in downhill training, then the downhill itself, then Super G. But in the super combined slalom leg, he laid down a wonderful run, came finished second with the speed section still to come. Alaska, his advantage, 1.15, and he is out of the slalom second run. A disappointment for Braden Luscom. We'll just contemplate for a while on the side of the piste.
just getting too late in the line. And then the snow just deviated him around the gate that he needed to make. He's never making it back. The youngster, he'll be back. And he'll be back in the Super Combine. Matt Hallett now out of the start gate. His advantage over our leader, Volkar, 1.56 seconds. In the LW2 class, Mike Luskin before him. The skiers have a significant impairment in one leg. Some skiers, for example, have an impaired leg from birth and they will uh, ski on one leg, 121.25. Well, it seems to be going okay. He is going okay. He's uh, a second inside. He's lost uh, just over half a second of his advantage, a third of it. Now, can he negotiate the flats and then the final terrain change in this finishing pitch? The money turns on this second run seem to be straight out the gate. It's quite a direct route down that finishing pitch, but Hallett hasn't done enough. He's 1,200, it's the wrong side of the clock, and he goes second. Toby Kane of Australia, next to go. Picked up a bronze medal in slalom at the uh, Sestri Air World Championships in 2011. His advantage over Golkar. 2.17. Now, this fog, I mean, the skiers will find it very difficult to see the ruts at the top of the piece. And uh, if they can negotiate those okay and get onto the middle and bottom part of the track, like from here on in, where the visibility is a lot better, and uh, it should stand them in good stead now 121 25 he must be inside it he is he's lost just four one hundredths of a second and Kane gets the rhythm going he dials into the track just a little wide there did he lose some speed on that check we'll find out soon enough because he's into the finishing pitch now 143 69 Time of our leader, Goka, and Kane is inside by two tenths, just over. He needed all of those two seconds advantage from the first run. So Australia lead from Austria and Canada in third. Next in the start hut is Alexander Alibiev of Russia. Third after the first run. He doesn't have an individual Winter Paralympic or Para World Championship medal to his name. His ambition was to win a medal here on home snow. And he's got a really good chance to do it. His advantage over Cade, a huge 2.4 seconds at the top of this second run he's getting pitched all over the place he's late in the line but he rescues it with some brilliant strength while wow, he's lost a lot of his advantage he's lost 1.4 he can afford no more mistakes Alibiev skiing for a medal here on home snow can he get in front of Toby Kane of Australia Kane waits to the bottom looks up watches Wait, Olivia needs 143.48 or better. Oh, it's much better. It's 2.74 seconds better. And he knows that he has meddled on home snow. Delight for Alexander Olivia of Russia. And Kane will have to wait. Hallett bumped out of the podium. But the time difference at the top here is huge. The next two skiers just tore it up in the first run. And it would require a mistake from them, you feel, for uh, Kane or Grokart to pick up a medal. <laughs> Vincent Gauthier Manuel, the world champion in slalom. 
his advantage over Libyev was at 0.56, but his advantage over Kate was much, much more than that. Yeah, three seconds. Wow. Half of the advantage. More than has gone. Gautier Manuel needs to motor down these final turns. He's getting the rhythm now. He's getting the speed. He's getting the direction. No, he's not. He's late in the line. Now that error could well have cost him. He needs to be super clean on these final few turns. 140.74, I think it's going to be beyond him. No, he's inside by half a second. He did ski it well. He skied it brilliantly. And Gautier Manuel will at least get a silver medal. Fifth in Vancouver. He will medal in Sochi. And yes. Kane must wait. Now, Alexei Bugayev was electric in the first run. I think the game plan must be just take it a little easy on these top turns. No, he's going full bore, isn't he? He was like a bullet in the first run. And now the visibility is better. He's going to let the skis run again. Bugayev in the LW682, like Gautier Manuel and Olivia before him. 117.91 the time. Oh, 1.4. He's added to his advantage. Four tenths. Bugayev, the 16 year old, looking for his first gold. He's got two bronze medals already. Bugayev, sorry, silver and bronze. This for the full sweep on home snow. Bugayev. Inside of the finish, he must take the goal. He does! Brilliant ski from Alexei Bugayev. Delight all round, and the first to congratulate him is his compatriot, Olivier. Brilliant stuff. The emotion on the friends and family of Alexei Bugayev. Understandable, brilliant skiing. He now has the full collection of medals from these games and didn't he deserve it? He was brilliant from start to finish. Well, with the medals decided, we still have the remaining skiers to come. And the first of them is Martin Falk of Austria. Third back in 2002, he was 17th quickest, or 16th quickest, excuse me, after the first run. He's also a silver medalist in the World Championships in 2004 for the record. He was 6.53 behind Bugayev at the top. And, uh, Oh, he's lost a load more time. None of these skiers coming now will uh, upset the medals. Can they ski into the top 12? Well, maybe they can. Almost certainly they can. James Stanton had a big mistake, so he's 18 seconds off the pace of Bugayev. And Falk is 13, and he goes uh, 11, uh, 12. Stanton drops to 13. Kirk Schornstein of Canada, the next to leave the gate. 25th in uh, Vancouver. Yeah. Doing all the disciplines here. Didn't finish the downhill 13 from the Super G. his business nicely on these top turns. Placing the top 15 beckons. If he can ski this second run well, 11 points, six off the pace, puts it in 13 slots for the time being. And with a couple of non-finishers in the top 15, there is space. Now, can he take it? we go going out of time. Now we'll see that a lot now. 138.97, but uh, what we're looking at for inside the top 12 is 152.09. And uh, he goes 
into 13th place on 54.05. Now, this set is Michael Brugger of Switzerland. Again, a skier who has medaled in previous Winter Paralympic Games. He's also medaled in previous World Championships, but uh, hasn't been on his top form here in Sochi. Brugge was uh, just at 700 behind Sean Stein, so can he get in front? No, he can't. He skis out and punches the pole in frustration. Oh. So disappointment for Michael Brugge. And he finished fifth in the down and Super G. Just got it wrong in the slalom. Going later and later in the line, couldn't make it back for the blue gate. And then the red one takes the brunt of his frustration. Alexander Vetrov now of Russia in the LW57 class. His first Winter Paralympic Games. Now he'll try and pick his way through the fog. Chance of a Top 15 slot awaits. Got to ski inside uh, 20257. Uh, at the halfway mark of the second run. He's 9.47 off the pace. That puts him, would put him in 12th if he can keep that sort of time gap at the bottom. Petrov inside of the finish. Russia celebrating, having taken two goals already in the two slalom disciplines. Run, Petrov! Oh, what a recovery that is! What a recovery! He goes 12th, 11th quickest on this second run. Slots in above Martin Falk and believe below Masahiko Tokai. James Whitley now of Great Britain. years of age uh, he was uh, three tenths behind Vetrov after the first run what can the youngster do on run two now the time gap at the interval is 11.92 that's uh, 15th on this uh, second run would put him into 40, the 15th spot at the bottom. And Whitley will get a finish in his first Winter Paralympic Games. 14th at the bottom goes in front of Kirk Schornstein and James Stanton. Toshi Hiro era of Japan now, the next out of the start hut. Eight tenths of a second behind Whitley at the top. He's been around on these Winter Paralympic Games for uh, some time. He first appeared in Alberville, would you believe, all the way back in uh, 1992. But he wants to ski without regret because he feels this could be his last Winter Paralympic Games. And he said that, we do have some skiers over 50 in the Alpine disciplines. So, he's at 42, so maybe he's got a couple left in him. Now, inside of the finish, the top 15 time is 154.05. I think he's going to be just outside that. And he is. It comes. It goes. And uh, he will slot into 16th place in uh, front of James Stanton, who had that big error.
Martin France of Slovakia. 20 seconds after the first run. Twice eight bronze medalists at the World Championships. Slovakia. Not so enjoying as a profitable games as they have previously in Alpine. They've taken five medals in total, but uh, last time round, they uh, really did enjoy themselves winning six golds, two silvers and three bronzes. They were third behind Canada and Germany. And having said that, retirement the Braxton Harlow of Germany and Wilson Croft of Canada is a large percentage of uh, the medals that those two countries won in Vancouver. Now, France won. Well, he's going to ski nicely. He's up into 14th place here. Martin France slots in between Martin Falk and James Whitley in the final packing order for the time being. So Ralph Green of the United States out of the start hut. Just struggling on these top turns. Uh, there are big holes. The standing category, the largest of the three. 42 skiers in the second one. There are 51 in the first. Over 100 skiers in that first run, and uh, 94 in the second. Green ski in the LW2 class for skiers that have a significant impairment in one leg. Getting it together in sight of the finish. And he slots into 17th position. Okay. Next up is Christoph Brudard of uh, Switzerland. And he is down. really not having a good time of it here in Sochi no way back for Bruda as he goes over on his left hand side so a DNF for him yeah, no, DNS, it did not start in the Super G. So now, now his compatriot, Robin Koosh Fair. Famous name, Koosh in Swiss Alpine skiing. And, uh, Didier Koosh is Robin Koosh's uncle. And there is skiing in the blood. And the two family. Robin, just 15 years of age, 25th after the first run. Skiing in the LW92 class for skiers that have an impairment affects arms and legs. Some skiers in this class have coordination problems such as spasticity. It's a loss of control over one side of their body. Depending on their abilities, they'll ski with one or two skis and one or two poles. Kush has two skis, two poles. And uh, needs a time inside 154.05 to make the top 15 in his first Winter Paralympic Games. And he's outside that and he will go 18th.
good skiing from Robin Kuse. Now, Hugo Bregans of Italy. 35th. Whoa, now, there's a course worker in the way there. Scurries to get out of Bregans' way. That's not what you want to see. Not sure what they were doing there. But Bregans, 26 after the first run. Where will he find himself at the first time split? The answer is 16.94 off the pace. That is uh, around uh, 19th position at the moment. And he loses much more. To oh, that was right across the helmet. And not surprisingly, it put him off his stride and tried to the finish. Yeah, misses a gate and is out. So big disappointment for Ugo Bregant of Italy. Oh, once you get in the back seat like that, very difficult. Got it back for the blue gate and then slipped off into the sugar and couldn't get it back. Jorge Miguelev of Chile, the next to ski. His third Winter Paralympic Games. And he's struggling in the top couple of turns. Now he's got it back together. Whoa! Very late in the line, but just brings it back in time. He's 43rd in slalom back in uh, Turin in 06. Gets the bottom. He's definitely going to finish better than that. And, uh, well, he's lost all his speed. Gets it back with well, 20.23. That is uh, 21st position. And Miguel has There's another big error inside of the finish, but. Uh, Finds himself the right side of the gate to continue. And uh, he will post the time, but will be last of the pack so far. 21st for him, 26.43 off the pace. The combined time of 2 minutes, 5 seconds, at point 0.4. Now, Sadesh Kalor of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Mainly racing slalom. 14. In the Salt Lake Paralympics, 34th in Vancouver. And he's skiing in the LW2 class. He's in pain on one leg. And uh, doing a fairly decent job on these opening turns. Not as many errors as we've seen from some of the skiers before. And, uh, he will stop the clock at the interval, 17.24 off the pace. Now, can he keep it error free and uh, jump in front of Jorge Miguelev? Kalor then for Iran, stops the clock. And a combined time of 2.01.24 goes 20th. Jumps above Miguelev and Stanton. Good skiing. Now, Stanislav Lofka of the Czech Republic. Next to go is uh, sixth Winter Paralympic Games. 45 years of age. Roscoe skiing the LW681 class. The skiers that have an impediment in one arm. The skiers will compete with one pole, pole only. And some skiers have uh, combined arm and leg impairments.
Good work from Loska now. The top 20 he needs to be inside 201.24. Loska is going to be close to 124. He is just outside. It goes 21st. So he jumps above Miguelev and Stanton. And uh, he enjoyed that. Now, Joki Rothlisberger of Switzerland in his first uh, Winter Paralympic Games, 24 years of age. Rothlisberger skiing the LW571. Class for athletes that have impairment in both arms. Some athletes have amputations, others have limited muscle power or coordination problems. And uh, they will race without pole. Now, Roethlisberger, and he finds some time on those that just above him in the pecking order. Came into this uh, run in uh, 30th position. Currently ranked 23rd, so a decent job being done by him. Good work from Roethlisberger in the steep final turns. Top 20, 201, that's outside, and he will go 23rd in front of Jorge Miguel as he makes up one spot. Mads Andreasen of Norway. Started para alpine competition racing three years ago. Thirty first after the first run. And he finds time to pick up spots. What again Miguel? Had a couple of big mistakes, so there's an opportunity to pick him off. Got to find a second on Roethlisberger. Now, Andreasen comes into this final pitch. Couple of gates from home, makes a little error coming across to the blue gate. Stops the clock, 2.03.89. Goes at 24th, he does get in front of Miguelath. Marco Zanotti. LW4 class. He's at first major competition. 34 years of age, he's set skiing in technical disciplines of slalom and giant slalom. He's on the bottom part, holding up quite well. There's just a couple of major holes on the top. Twenty-three, forty-five off the pace. That's going to put him twenty-six. Thereabouts, two hundred five point four. The uh, bottom time we've had so far. And for Notti, he's not going to beat that. He will go into twenty-sixth position. 31 seconds off the pace of our winner, Bugayev. Zdraví všechny z Česká z Ostravy. So the next gear to uh, come out the start hut. Is Carlos Javier Candina Tomatis? Nikotala Yamazaki. He's got a couple of more skiers to go before he goes. 
Uh, standing so far after the second run, Alexey Bugayev wins Russia's second gold of the evening here at the Alpine skiing. Vincent Gautier Manuel repeats the silver medal of four years ago, and Alexander Alibiev wins his first major medal. He wanted to win a medal in Sochi on home snow, and he has achieved that with a bronze. So nine more skiers left to come. And next up is Carlos Javier Godina Tomatis of Argentina. He'll be skiing in the snowboard cross on day seven of competition here. Just getting an early feel for the snow. And the W forecast for Cardina Tomatis, 40 years of age, 33rd after run one. A few holes and ruts appearing. Not too bad through this section, but that's the flatter section. And uh, 24.4 seconds off the pace. It's at the intermediate checkpoints. Now, Zanotti currently lies in 26th in last place. This time, 2.10.05. And Kadina Tomates, and he's inside it. Goes 26, overtakes one. Ian Yansing now, the United States of America. LW92 class. He's only racing slalom. Only raced GS in Vancouver. Finished 32nd there. Right. His gap that he needs to make up over Kadina Tomatis is uh, nearly two seconds. So. Uh, Big ass for Yansing to try and uh, overtake him, but he might get the better of Zanotti. And that the time split is 23 seconds off the pace. He's got another sort of six, seven seconds to play with. Now W92 class. Got two skiers having impairments in arms and legs. Some skiers have coordination problems. They have a loss of control over one side of their body. And Yansink doing a good job on these bumpy, rutty turns. Whoa, just makes the red gate. And it goes 28. Combined time of 2.10.75. Fukutaro Yamazaki. The next to ski, the next Yansen. same class as Yansing. His first major competition. Skiing the uh, technical disciplines. 22 years of age. And Yamazaki. Oh, gets his upper body twisted. In an ideal world, you want to keep those shoulders down the full line. And the uh, bottom half of the body doing all the work. But, uh, it's very rutty and icy in those little sections. And these inexperienced skiers in terms of major competitions such as World Championships, Power World Championships and Winter Paralympic Games understandably struggling struggling on these difficult icy steep conditions Yamazaki inside of the finish 21075 to get above Yancey uh, it comes and goes it's a matter of survival for him but it's one 
that he has done. And he goes 29. And now there were five. Jasper Balkan of Belgium, the next to go. 21 years of age. Not expecting too much of himself here. That's the medal in 18 in Pyeongchang. Skiing in the LW91 class. Balkan, 36 after the uh, first run. It was uh, seven tenths slower than Yamazaki. Yeah, let me find some time. Well, Yamazaki was 30.2 off the pace at the time check, so let's see how Balkan goes. Wow, well, he's uh, found some time, so if we can find a bit more time on these bottom turns, then he will overtake Yamazaki. Yamazaki had a big mistake inside of the finish, so Balkan, if we can ski this bottom part well, can make out the spot. That's a big rut there. Oh, that's almost the same spot that Yamazaki made the error. Now, Yamazaki's time, 2.16.36. Oh, yeah, well done. Inside by four seconds. Patrick Parnell of the United States being next out of the start gates. His uh, first Winter Paralympic Games and he's only skiing slalom. And uh, he's gone the wrong way through the blue red gate combination, hasn't he? A disappointment for Jan Singh. Parnell, sorry, he is out of the running. So, we have Italy, Serbia, Armenia, Turkey and Chile remaining. Uh, Valenti of Italy doing in the LW92 class. 16 years of age, 38 after run one. What can he do on run two? LW92 class. Valenti, 29.72 seconds off the pace. And uh, taking it steadily down this second run. 16-year-old looking for a finish inside of that finish line. Two gates from home, Valenti sets his time at 2.17.10. Yukoslav Milosevic now of Serbia. His first Winter Paralympic Games carried the Serbian flag at the opening ceremony. Seeing that sugary snow at the top. And, uh, and this run, and some big, big holes appearing in the run. And we've still got the sitting skiers to come as well. It's going to be incredibly difficult for them. And they've got the worst of the conditions running. 
last of three or last of six if the uh, competition is combined with the women. Milosevic 38.42 off the pace. That's going to put him 32nd position. 2.17.10 the time to beat. He was uh, 3.3 seconds off the time of Valenti, who's currently in 31st place. So Milosevic not looking like he's going to make up that time gap. But having started 39th, he's going to be 32nd. So he makes up seven slots. Mayor of Venetian of Armenia. Armenia, Armenian athlete. The game's 33 years of age, skiing in the uh, LW571 class. Skiers are having impairment in both arms. Another next down, doing a good job. He was uh, one point eight seconds slower than Milosevic on uh, the first run. And, uh, well, Milosevic is thirty-eight point four two down here, but he's made up some time. He's just a second behind Milosevic there. Phenomenal ski. Uh, Avanesian just got nothing to help him balance. Oh, no, no, no. Well, he's inside the blue gate and he will get a finish. And he gets a rousing reception from those at the bottom. But, uh, good ski. Well done. 230 34. So it's uh, a really, really good ski. Um, have an SDM. <laughs> Mehmet Cekic of Turkey the next to go. He is uh, skiing in the LW4 class. And, uh, uh, Oh, an SCM had that big mistake, didn't he? But he was 39.49 off the pace at the first time check in Tekic. I think he's going to be inside that, is he? I don't know. 44 years of age. Tekic well, enjoying these icy, rocky conditions. I hard to say I blame him. 43.91. Ooh, he's just got a little bit out of shape there, Czechic. Puts it back under control, gets the edge to bite. Again, a little stiff in the upper body. That's the body and legs working as one rather than two individual units. So, 2.30, 34 to beat. He can't beat it and he goes 34. Santiago Vega, the last of the 41 skiers to, or 42 skiers, sorry, to ski the second run. 16 years of age. He was uh, one and a half seconds behind Cekic at the start. His compatriot Jorge Miguelet so currently well, will finish in 25th position. In his first major championship. Can he get to the bottom in one piece? Good work from Vega. Now, check it, she was at 43.91 down at the uh, time check. 43.91, has Vega made up some time? Yes, he has. So, 
made up a little bit of time. Is it enough to get him into 34th place and put uh, Cechic down one? Certainly looks quicker than Cechic. Santiago Vega then, a couple of gates from home. The time to beat 2.34.42. Oh, brilliant ski. Goes 32nd, makes up three places. And the 16-year-old gives his supporters something to cheer about. Well, here are the final standings of the men's slalom standing competition. What a race we have had. Alexei Bugayev wins gold after bronze in the downhill and silver in the Super G. Vincent Gautier Manuel picks up a silver and Alexandra Alibiev of Russia in his first majors picks up a well-deserved bronze medal again for Russia. So 42 started, 35 finished. Uh, check it within a minute of the electrically fast Alexei Bugayev. Yet more delight for fans of Russia. They just can't stop winning gold medals at these Winter Paralympics. They really are blazing a trail here in Sochi 2014.